Good evening. Welcome to Old St. Mary's Church as we celebrate the Eucharist on this, the 25th Sunday in Ordinary Time. I'm Leslie, and Scott and I will be leading the music. While only the cantor is able to sing during this phase of reopening the church, the music and the readings for this Mass can be found in this week's worship aid. Feel free to follow along on your phone or device if you'd like. Just click the Sunday Worship Aid link on the front page of our parish website, oldstmarys.com. Presiding and preaching at this liturgy is Father Schoberly. Our gathering song is Gather Us In. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace to you, and peace from God our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ. And with your spirit. Good evening. Good evening. As we gather tonight, um, you may think that the scripture readings are a little bit strange, because they um, strange from a couple perspectives. One from maybe it isn't thinking about things and the way we think of things in the world today until it gets to the punchline. And the punchline of the scripture tonight at the end of the gospel is God is generous. And that's very appropriate as we celebrate confirmation tonight because it's all about God's love and generosity. So as we get ready to figure that out, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare for these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty Almighty God. God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. And therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, of a virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. And may Almighty God have mercy on us Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Glory 
to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O oh God, Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. Glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace to people of good will. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father. Glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace to people of goodwill. Amen, amen, amen. Let us pray. Ever loving Lord, fulfill for us your gracious promise so that by the coming of the Holy Spirit we may be made witnesses before the world to the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call him while he is near. Let the scoundrel forsake his ways, and the wicked his thoughts. Let him turn to the Lord for mercy, to our God, who is generous in forgiving. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. As high as the heavens are above the earth, so high are my ways above your ways, and my thoughts above your thoughts. The Word of the Lord. we 
I will bless you day after day and praise your name forever and ever. A reading from the, Saint, uh, from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, Christ will be magnified in my body, whether by life or by death. For to me, life is Christ, and death is gain. If I go on living the flesh, that means fruitful labor for me. And I do not know which I shall choose. I am caught between the two. I long to depart this life and be with Christ, for that is far better. Yet that I remain in the flesh is more necessary for your benefit. Only conduct yourselves in a way worthy of the gospel of Christ. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus told his disciples this parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out at dawn to hire laborers for his vineyard. After agreeing with them for the usual daily wage, he sent them into his vineyard. Going out about nine o'clock, the landowner saw others standing idle in the marketplace, and he said to them, you too go to my vineyard, and I will give you what is just. And so they went off. And he went out again around noon and around three o'clock and did likewise. Going out about five o'clock, the landowner found others standing around and said to them, Why do you stand here idle all day? They answered, Because no one has hired us. He said to them, You too go to my vineyard. When it was evening, the owner of the vineyard said to his foreman, Summon the laborers and give them their pay, beginning with the last and ending with the first. When those who had started about five o'clock came, each received the usual daily wage. So when the first came, they thought that they would receive more, but each of them also got the usual wage. And on receiving it, they grumbled against the landowner, saying, These last ones only worked an hour, and you have made them equal to us, who bore the day's burden and the day's heat. He said to one of them in reply, My friend, I am not cheating you. Did you not agree with me for the usual daily wage? Take what is yours and go. What if I wish to give this last one the same as you? Or am I not free to do as I wish with my own money? Are you envious because I am generous? Thus the last will be first and the first will be last. The Gospel of the Lord. Father Brad, for the past year, these young men and women have been preparing for, to accept their faith as young adults and have been working to celebrate the accomplishments through the Sacrament of Confirmation. They have worked hard in this process and are asking to be confirmed. It is my pleasure to present them for the Sacrament. Candidates, please stand as your name is called and remain standing in your places. Jack Castellani, Claudia Omet, Jillian Piotrowski, Sophia Soik, Jackson Snyder, and Catherine Tracy. Ladies and gentlemen, our candidates for confirmation. And you may be seated. So, what do you think? Do you think this is kind of an odd gospel? I mean, you've probably heard it a lot over the course of the years. But, I, I mean, aren't the workers right? I mean, they're, they're trying to say, you know, we worked harder, we worked longer, we should get more? What if I told you their daily wage was $10,000? Would that change the difference between the first and last? The quandary before us is, you know, as Jesus has mentioned and as the other scripture passage have mentioned, we don't always look at things the way God does. And the way God does is 
he wants to give us the best. He wants to give us the fullest. You know, I, I said $10,000, everyone's getting $10,000 for one day. Sounds pretty good. What if I raised it to a million? That's how generous God is with us. God wants to give us everything. God wants to give us the moon and the sun and the stars. God wants us to see that, that his love is so powerful that it changes us and changes how we think of ourselves and how we are connected to each other. This sacrament of confirmation, which you have been preparing for for all these years, takes each of you on a different journey, takes each of you to a different point in your life, takes each of you to a different point in the day in the gospel story. So if, if you were to reflect on where are you in the day of being hired? Are you the first ones there? Are you mid-morning? Are you mid-day, mid-afternoon? Or are you the ones at the end of the day? Where do you fit in that great scheme of things? Knowing that God is inviting you to be workers in his vineyard. God is inviting you to see your giftedness and yourself. The gospel never explains to us why the different people are late or where they are during this time or if the landowner moves to a different section of the gathering place. We just hear that they're different and there are different people ready at different times. And it is that realization that we all can be ready at different times and still know that God wants to give us everything. So the sacrament of confirmation is about Christ giving us his Holy Spirit and about asking us, after we've done our preparation, do you get what I'm asking you to do? I'm asking you to go out into this vineyard and prune and to cut down and to gather in. He's asking us, and there may be different jobs within the same job, He's asking us to identify who we are and what we are called to do in the midst of that. But he gives us his Holy Spirit. And so while we can be uniquely ourselves, called in our own different ways, he's still going to give us everything. He's going to give us the whole Holy Spirit. It's just like, I don't know if you remember back to your first communion, but when you received Eucharist for the first time, you weren't getting a piece of bread you weren't getting a sip of wine. In either the bread, in either the wine, you're getting the whole Christ. You aren't taking a bite out of Jesus. You're getting the whole Christ. You're getting the whole God loves you peace to use and to be nourished and to grow into. And so when we come to the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit builds on that. This sacrament of confirmation touches seven particular gifts. And those gifts are meant to set your heart afire. But each of you may find that there is a different gift at different times that is pulling you forward. So the seven gifts that you know, that you have been studying, the gift of wisdom, it is that capacity to figure things out and to have them make sense and to be able to share that insight with others. So are you wise? Understanding is the ability to make sense of how things are and to see how they relate. Are you understanding? Counsel, it is that gift to be able to receive direct insight from the spirit or from someone else imbued with the faith. But it is also the gift you are given from the spirit to give counsel to others to advise them and help them keep the faith. Do you feel counsel? Fortitude, or strength, is that sense of standing up for what is right, knowing what is right, doing it. And it is when we look at the creed and have the courage to defend what we believe. Do you have fortitude? Knowledge is different than wisdom, but wisdom uses knowledge. This spirit gift 
sets our heart on fire to discover new insights and fills our minds with the desire to have useful ideas that lead to creativity and curiosity. Do you know what it's like to have knowledge? Piety. As you are confirmed, it is now your responsibility to figure out what keeps you in contact with the Lord. What are the ways you pray? What are your prayers? Do you have a special place to pray? This spiritual gift asks what touches your heart, even as it asks you to keep exploring and to keep staying connected to God. Like the giftedness of figuring out what your place is in the vineyard, piety is knowing that you have a place and know that it may change, but you can always discover it. Do you experience piety? And finally, the spirit of fear of the Lord. Now, these days, there are many scary things that surround us. Disease, violence, prejudice, mistrust, loneliness. And all of those are scary and threatening. But something that scares more people than anything else is love. Now, I've said this before. I've said this to every confirmation class. Love is a pretty scary thing. And maybe you don't think so. Maybe you think my saying love is scary is crazy. But have you asked someone out on a date yet? Or ask your parents, did they ask someone to marry them and what it was like leading up to that point? Or do you know what it's like for your parents when you go out any night and they're waiting for you to come back? Well, maybe you do. I found out when my parents would go out when I was a kid, I was probably more nervous about them getting home than they were ever about me. And yet, that's, that's the scariness of love. It's when you care about someone so much and, and you know it, it, it could go south so quickly. But the Spirit calls us to have this fear of God because God wants to give us this love. And, and we so often think we aren't worthy of it. And yet that is what God chooses to do. He wants to give us the sense of who he is, which is both loving and scary because it's so powerfully loving. That is what fear of the Lord is. It is this profound love that you are not sure where it's going to go, where it's going to take you, how far it's going to take you. But it is free, and it is a choice we get to make to do that to explore the unknown. It is called the leap of faith because it is unknown, and yet you can still leap with hope because the promise has been given to you. So these seven gifts of the Holy Spirit always bring us back to that love of God, that Holy Spirit, that grace, that generous love that God just wants to pile on us and wants us to absorb. And that is the gift you are being asked to welcome tonight, unconditionally. Because however you've gotten to tonight, whatever you've done so far in your faith journey, tonight is a new beginning. Tonight is a new way to say, wow, God's Spirit's coming upon me in all these gifts. He is being generous to me, even though sometimes I've scratched my head or I've had doubt or I've been not sure where I was going. The Holy Spirit has known where you've been going this whole time. And tonight, in the power of this sacrament, he gives it to you. So be ready. Be ready to find out at the end of the day he's given you the whole day's wages. And it's a great blessing and gift. I'm going to invite all the candidates to stand once again, and this time to come to their places that they were assigned before the liturgy, and then if their sponsors would stand and go to their places behind them.
As in baptism, so in confirmation, we have baptismal promises. Now tonight are special promises, and we are going to ask just the candidates to speak aloud in answer to them. Now, the rest of you, you want to hear them, right? Give me, yes, okay. So candidates, just remember, the masks block a lot of sound. So I, I need a good I do or a good yes. So you want to try that? How did you hear back there? Not so good. Okay, try it. I do one more time. Better. It was light. Okay, so that, that's what they give. So that was the practice. That was the practice. Here are the real questions. So do you renounce Satan and all his works and all his empty promises? Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who today, through the sacrament of confirmation, is given to you in a special way, just as he was given to the apostles on the day of Pentecost? Do you believe in the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? This is our faith. This is the faith of the Church. We are proud to profess it in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. So I'm going to invite everyone else to please stand. And I'm going to say a prayer over the candidates. And then after I've said that prayer, usually at this point is where they go up to the bishop and the bishop lays hands on each of them, but this is COVID time. What I will do is in silence go to each of them and extend my hands over them, inviting the Holy Spirit to come down upon them. So dearly beloved, let us pray to God the Almighty Father for these his adopted sons and daughters already born again to eternal life in baptism, that he will graciously pour out the Holy Spirit upon them to confirm them with his abundant gifts and through his anointing, conform them more fully to Christ, the Son of God. Let us pray for each of them in silence. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who brought these, your servants, to new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, freeing them from sin. Send upon them, O Lord, the Holy Spirit, the paraclete. Give them the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and fortitude, the spirit of knowledge and piety, Fill them with the spirit of fear of the Lord, through Christ our Lord. Amen. I will now anoint each of them with the chrism, as I'll have to mask up for that. As I do that, I will say to each of you, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit, and I will anoint you in the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. You say, Amen. That's right. And then I'll say, peace be with you, and you say, 
and with your spirit. Catherine, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. John, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Cecilia, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Philomena, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Maria Goretti, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. My dear brothers and sisters, let us humbly pray to God the Almighty Father to be of one mind in our prayer, just as faith, hope, and charity, which proceed from the Holy Spirit, are one. For these his sermons, servants, whom the gift of the Holy Spirit has confirmed, that planted in faith and grounded in love, they may bear witness to Christ the Lord by their way of life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. For their parents and sponsors, that by word and example, they may continue to encourage those whom they have sponsored in the faith to follow in, their, in the footsteps of Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For the Holy Church of God, together with Francis our Pope, Blaze our bishop and all the bishops, that gathered by the Holy Spirit, the church may grow and increase in unity of faith and love until the coming of the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the whole world, that all people who have one maker and father may acknowledge one another as brothers and sisters, without discrimination of race or nation, and with sincere hearts seek the kingdom of God, which is peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear hear our prayer. prayer. For an end to the global pandemic, guidance of those who work to prevent diseases of all types, and for healing hands for all caregivers and healings uh, for for all those who are sick or injured with any type of illness. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear hear our our prayer. prayer. For the Spirit's love to so captivate our world that injustice, prejudice, and violence be overcome and that all people will work together to respect and honor the dignity and sacredness of all people. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. O God, who gave the Holy Spirit to your apostles and willed that through them and their successors the same Spirit be handed on to the rest of the faithful, listen favorably to our prayer and grant that your divine grace, which was at work when the gospel was first proclaimed, 
may now spread through the hearts of those who believe in you, through Christ our Lord. And once again, we congratulate our newly confirmed candidates. And you may be seated. Just a reminder that uh, during this time of COVID, while we are not able to take up a collection directly here in the worship space, if you brought your contribution with you, there is donation boxes on the other side of that pillar back there by the font, or if you give online or wish to give online, you are certainly welcome to do that. Thank you for your generosity with all of that. Thank you for your great generosity in helping your kids reach this day. Pray, brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. O Lord, in your mercy, receive the prayers of your servants and grant that, being conformed more perfectly to your Son, they may grow steadily in bearing witness to him as they share in the memorial of his redemption, by which he gained for us your Holy Spirit, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty, our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For you bestow gifts suited to every season and guide the church in wonderful ways. By the power of the Holy Spirit, you come unfailingly to her aid so that with a heart always subject to you, she may never fail to seek your help in time of trouble nor cease to give you thanks in time of joy in Christ Jesus our Lord. And so in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you and with joy we proclaim.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look with favor upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and our patron, along with Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, St. Paul, and the patrons that are newly confirmed have chosen as their namesakes, as well as all the saints on whose constant intercession we rely for unfailing help. And may this sacrifice of our reconciliation, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, Blaise, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people that you have gained for your own. Lord, also remember your servants here before us, reborn in baptism, whom have now been pleased, whom you have now been pleased to confirm by the bestowing of the Holy Spirit. In your mercy, keep safe and keep them safe in your grace. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you, and in your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. For through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
words Jesus himself gave us, we dare to say, Our Father, Father, who who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, O Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, kingdom, the power, power, and the glory glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let's offer to each other in some special way a sign of peace. If you have not been with us during this time of reopening, the key to communion is to follow the lead of the ushers. The ushers will come to each pew. They will invite you forward as you come. Please hold your hands out. They will sanitize your hand. And then with, without uh, touching anything, you'll proceed forward, keeping about six foot distance. There are marks on the carpet to help with that. And then you'll come to the Eucharistic minister and extend your hands and they will place the Eucharist in your hand. And then you turn and move to the yellow decals, which are about six feet away. There you drop your mask and consume, put the mask up and continue back to your pew along that route, okay? As I said, ushers are your friend, follow their lead. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord, I am am now worthy worthy that that you should enter enter under my roof. But only say say the the word, word, and my soul soul shall be healed. Yearn for days of fullness, all 
Wandering here in truth. 
O Lord, from this day forward, accompany with your blessing those who have been anointed with the Holy Spirit and nourished by the sacrament of your Son, so that with all trials overcome, they may gladden your church by their holiness and through their works and their charity, foster her growth in the world. Through Christ our Lord. Well, thank you for joining us once again here in person and those of you who joined us online for our prayer and worship today during this very unusual and challenging times. We are reminded constantly of our need to think about our, our next ways of sharing the faith and going forward. Um, you can check what's going on in the parish and opportunities that are there by looking at our bulletin online. Inside the bulletin, you'll, you'll see information regarding the 2020 census, which is to complete at the end of September, so please feel free to look into that. And the general election is only a few weeks away. Today's bulletin contains some important information as we prepare ourselves to vote. There's also information about volunteer opportunities, both at the Mass as usher and greeter and other ministries, as well as other volunteer opportunities in the area. Check us out at oldstmarys.com and you'll see many other important information, many other important notices about things we can do and are doing for our world today. Um, at this point, I'm going to ask our confirmation candidates to come forward once again. There are stars up here for them to stand on, so I'm going to invite them forward. And there are stars down below. So up here on the top first. Yep. Right there. And they're just sort of socially distanced. There we go. Now these are, um, I want you to see all of these people. I'm going to invite them. Now you all wave at the camera. It's right next to the clock back there. Wave at that. And go ahead and drop your mask so that everyone can see you as we congratulate you again on your confirmation. Thank you very much, and you may return with your Mass and join your families, and let us all stand as we ask for God's blessing. May God the Almighty Father bless you, whom he has made his adopted sons and daughters, reborn from water and the Holy Spirit, and may he keep you worthy of his fatherly love. Amen. Amen. And may his only begotten Son, who promised that the Spirit of truth would abide in his church, bless you and confirm you by his power in the confession of the one true faith. Amen. Amen. And may the Holy Spirit, who kindles the fire of charity in the hearts of disciples, bless you and lead you blameless and gathered as one into the joy of the kingdom of God. Amen. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Go now to proclaim the good news of Christ. Thanks be to God. My soul cries out with a joyful shout that the God of my heart is great. And my spirit sings of the wondrous things that you bring to the ones who wait. You fixed your sight on the servant's plight, and my weakness you did not spurn. So from east to west shall my name be blessed, could the world be about to turn. My heart shall sing of the day you bring, let the fires of your justice burn. Wipe away all tears, for the dawn draws near, and the world is about to turn. Though I am small, my God, 
but my all, you were great things in me, and your mercy will last from the depths of the past to the end of the age to be. Your very name puts the proud to shame, and to those who would for you yearn, you will show your might, put the strong to a flight, for the world is about to shall sing of the day you bring, let the fires of your justice burn. Wipe away all tears, for the dawn draws near, and the world is about to turn. Thank <laughs> you.